joining us. You can share uh, the video, take a friend. Uh, if you have any comment that is relevant to what we are discussing, you can type in the comment section. If you have any um, question uh, that is relevant also, you can type in, in the uh, comment section. If we see it during the show, we'll address it. If we see it after, we'll respond to the, to the comment or the question. Um, thank you for joining us once again. Uh, let's grow together. Our topic today is creating wealth in uncertain times. I normally uh, come up with an inspirational quote that is relevant to our topic. But today, as I was uh, working on it, uh, a chapter rather uh, came into my mind. Read it. Uh, it's kind of self explanatory. But uh, uh, read uh, Genesis uh, or Genesis, depending on which country you are from. Uh, Genesis 26. Um, it, now it says, Now there was a famine in the land, besides the earlier famine of Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Ab Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Jera. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt, live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and your descendants. And I will give you this land, and will confirm the oath I, saw, I swore to your father, Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and will give them all these lands. And through your offsprings, all lands on earth will be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and kept my requirements and my commands, my decrees and my laws. So Isaac stayed in Jerah. The man of that place asked him about his wife. He said, she's my sister, because he was afraid to say she is my wife. He thought the man of this place might kill me on account of Rebecca, because she is. When Isaac had been there for a long time, Abimelech, king of Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac uh, caressing his wife, Rebecca. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, she's really your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Isaac answered him, because I thought I might look on account of her. Then Abimelech said, what, what is this we have done? One of the men might have uh, slept with the wife and would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people. Anyone who molests this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Isaac planted crops in that land. The same year reaped a hundredfold. The man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and heads and servants that Philistines envied him. So all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped up, filling them with earth. Then Abimelech's Isaac, move away from us. You have become too powerful for us. So the, um, I just like the pass there because it was uh, during famine. But um, Isaac uh, became rich. And his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. And uh, people even started to envy him. And they had to ask if because they were said he had become too powerful for us. So they've loved to go deeper. But Timba, is there any news you wish to bring to our attention? Before I bring any news to the attention of our viewers, I think you're on to something there, Tafazu. Um, from your introductory comments. There are three things that I would want to say based on what you have said. The first thing that I would want to say is that the secret of creating wealth in uncertain times is doing the opposite of what everyone else is doing. Generally, what happens in uncertain times is that people panic. Generally, what happens in uncertain times is that um, people take decisions that are motivated by fear much more than motivated by faith. So one secret of creating wealth in uncertain times is doing exactly the opposite of what everyone else is doing. And we'll elaborate on that, Tafadzon. Um, there is something in investment that we refer to as the head mentality. The head mentality is basically uh, group-based behavior. When people think like a head of cattle, for example. And that's something that we must be very careful you know, about. 
The second thought that I would want to bring the, to the attention of our viewers and our listeners is that at the end of the day, wealth creation is about assets. It's really about assets. Um, so when we talk about creating wealth in uncertain times, we're basically talking about um, investing in assets that are likely going to go up um, in value. The third thought that I would want us to explore in this particular presentation is that history has shown that sometimes massive wealth creation happens during times of, you know, let's just call them tectonic shifts, during times of market disruptions. Um, and so we mustn't really be afraid of change. So those are the three thoughts that we'll be exploring in this particular presentation, Tafazo. But you asked me, is there any news? I would want to talk about three things. Um, the first thing that I would want to talk about is that in South Africa, on Thursday, the South African Reserve Bank kept rates unchanged. Um, they kept the repo rate unchanged at 8.25%. Uh, what that means is that the prime rate remains at 11.75%, you know, uh, which is still at a 15-year high. But what was interesting to me are some of the comments that the governor made during the presentation of the decision. And based on those comments, it's very much unlikely that you know, rates will come down significantly um, until probably towards the end of the year uh, because of the concerns that they still have around inflation. In fact, the summary of what he said is that inflation is expected to reduce in only in 2025. So again, that cements our view that rates are not going to come down anytime soon. And we, it's something that we've been saying uh, for a long time. The second thing that I would want to say, which is news in South Africa at the moment, is the election results. Um, the last time I checked the election results, the ANC was sitting on 40.2%, which is far less than the majority that they require you know, to govern. And what that means is that the country has entered into um, uncertain times. It has entered into uncharted territory. It has never happened in the history of this country um, since democracy. Um, that um, you know that, that they you know that there is there is need to form um, you know coalition um, you know there. But what was interesting to me was the response of the rand. Uh, since 29 May. I've been monitoring the rand, and the rand so far has fallen down by something like 2% against the major currencies since the 29th of, um, of May. And there is you know, a likelihood that the rand may continue depreciating. Um, it's all dependent on how the coalition talks you know, actually you know, pan out. Um, hence, our topic today around, is it possible to create wealth um, in uncertain times? It's also informed by some of the um, tectonic shifts that are happening in the political world um, there. Um, still speaking on uncertainty, I saw a report today which was basically saying that in a Wall Street, may also experience significant stock market volatility, especially towards the November election, because America, the Americans will be going to elections in, in November. And so the expectation is that there is going to be significant you know, volatility uh, there. So that's what I wanted to just bring to the attention of our of our listeners, you know, for for the moment. It's around the theme of uncertainty. And when we talk about uncertainty, we from a market point of view, we're basically talking about the inability to forecast future events. 
Um, at the end of the day, we live in times where um, nobody is really able to focus future events. And generally, and this is one thing that we must bear in mind, markets don't like uncertainty, you know, at all. Um, you know, markets, you know, like certainty, which is why the RAND responded, you know, the way it responded. And which is why there is, um, you know, every possibility that the RAND will continue to, you know, respond, depending on how the, um, the, the, the coalition, you know, talks, you know, pan out. Um, over to you, Tafatsu. Thank you, Temba, for those uh, insights. Our topic today is creating wealth in uncertainty. Why are we talking about uncertain times? We're talking about uncertain times because, you know, generally speaking, the times that we are living in, you know, um, are very, very, you know, uncertain. Uncertain because of a number of events, uncertain because of geopolitical uh, conflicts. When we talk about geopolitical conflicts, we're basically talking about the wars that are being fought, but also uncertain from a political point of view. Um, I think if I analyze the results from South Africa, um, and, and these are not my words, they are the words of um, somebody that I was listening to today. They basically say, say that the political landscape in South Africa is experiencing tectonic shifts. So we've had a situation where um, a political party that was started six months ago has made significant inroads um, in terms of um, you know, gaining a constituency, a political constituency. And so many people are worried in terms of what does that mean from an investor, you know, point of view? So those are uncertain times, you know. So uncertain times in South Africa, uncertain times even, you know, on the global political landscape uh, as well. I spoke about um, the, the American, you know, elections. So that's why we're talking about uncertain times. Um, the level of uncertainty has, has increased. I do quite a lot of strategy work, uh, particularly in the public sector. And one of the things that I have seen is that a number of public sector companies have deferred strategic planning until after the elections, you know, because of the uncertainty. Normally, some of them would have concluded their strategic planning process by now. But, um, you know, the, 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 there was guidance given to them that you know, wait for the election because of the policy uncertainty, because nobody knows what the governing authorities might actually do in terms of, um, of, of the policies. So that's why we're talking about uncertain times. But generally, in a knowledge-based economy, in this fourth industrial revolution or fifth industrial revolution, you know, it's basically a an industrial revolution that is characterized by a lot of uncertainty, um, by a lot of volatility. And I guess uh, we need to be used to, you know, that volatility. It's an environment where, you know, people can start fighting, you know, at any point. Think of the war that is happening, Russia vis-a-vis -vis in Russia versus Ukraine, and think of the war that is being fought by the Israelis in in you know in in Gaza, you know there is a lot of uncertainty, and I can almost predict that because of the uncertainty, we are also going to see political changes even in Israel, you know itself, and so there is no question in my mind that we are living in uncertain times, and therefore what we need to reflect on is. Is it possible to still create wealth in uncertain times? And how do we create wealth in, in uncertain times? Before I hand over back to you, Tafazo, let me just say something which is, which is something that I was reflecting on. 
Um, for those of you who are listening to us, put yourself in one of these three categories, right? Category number one, um, let's just call it uh, the retail space. The retail space or the retail sector consists of individual um, to whom things happen to, right? These are the people that are saying, oh, it's uncertain times, things are happening you know, to me, you know, 95% um, of all the people that you will meet are in the retail space. They are victims of uncertain times. They are victims of inflation. They are victims of government policy changes. They are victim of market dislocations. They are victim of, of wars. You know, many people operate in that, you know, retail space. There are a few individuals that you will meet, and I hope you'll be one of them, that will graduate to the what I call the wholesale space. The wholesale space is basically uh, people that have identified a niche for themselves. And because they've identified a niche for themselves, these are people that are not concerned about um, where do I need to invest so that I can make a lot of money? Um, these are people that understand that opportunities exist in niches. Right? That's a very important statement that we must never forget. Opportunities do not necessarily exist in markets. Opportunity exists in niches. So in an uncertain time, it's very important to identify your own niche because it may happen that certain markets that you are used to may actually be dislocated, may actually even um, be completely disrupted by you know, things that are happening. There is a small category of people out there that are creating niches for themselves. I'm aware of people that, in spite of the uncertainty in the world, in spite of the wars that are currently being fought, in spite of the inflation that is in this world, there is a group of people, and I'm aware of certain people that are pursuing investments in artificial intelligence. Some of those investments they are going to bring to the market, they've identified a niche for themselves. And some of them are creating markets that never used to, um, to exist you know, at all. So uncertain times may actually result in political dislocations, in tectonic shifts, in markets disappearing altogether. Um, but regardless of that, wealth is being created. And wealth is being created by a few group of people who have identified a niche for themselves, right? Regardless of what that niche is. And so one of the advice that I will be giving to you today about creating wealth in uncertain times is that identify a niche for yourself. Identify for your niche, you know, for yourself. Uh, in the passage that you read, Tafazwa, today, um, I think it referred to Isaac planting crops um, at a time when there was a drought. I remember what I also said to you today, one of the secrets of creating wealth in uncertain times is to do um, sometimes things that are contrary to popular wisdom, right? Things that are contrary to popular wisdom. Um, this is a man who is identifying him for himself a niche of planting crops at a time when conventional wisdom says it cannot be done. Um, and these are people that are in the wholesale market. You know, they operate using some kind of wisdom that they get, which is contrary to the head mentality, because the head mentality basically says run. The world is falling apart. The world is not falling apart. The world is not about to end. If anything, these are times where you need to stay calm. Um, and so identify a niche for yourself. Then there is a third category of people 
who in uncertain times I would want to refer to as creators of markets. These are people that can create a totally, totally different uh, market altogether based on the niches that they have created. So before we go any further, Tafazo, uh, I would want our audience, our listeners to ask themselves, are you in the retail space? Um, are you in the wholesale space? Or are you a creator of a market? Here is the thing, Tafazo. In this uncertain world that we are living in, we are going to see individuals that are going to create uh, markets that never used to exist. Individuals that are going to define things in a way that has never been defined you know, before. For example, I can almost assure you that money as we know it today may not necessarily exist in the way that we know money, right? Um, there is blockchain technology and nobody knows where that is leading the world to. They are cryptocurrencies and some people are creating markets out of all of these technologies and out of all of these things to such an extent that we are going to see disruption in terms of how people understand money and how transactions are being done. And so they are, there is a group of people that are creating markets. What is the thing that I'm saying here? What, you know, what I'm essentially saying is that um, there are opportunities in uncertain times. And those opportunities exist in, in, in niches. Tafazo, over to you. Um, thank you for uh, those insights. As you were talking, uh, um, most of uh, the Jews, I was listening to someone was talking why Jews are successful in business, and uh, yet there are so few. And uh, they were just explaining how the Jews started. Like, I think they were not uh, wanted. So they started to do business and um, because they started to do business and when they did business, they became a community. And in that community, because they wanted to produce everything for themselves, they had to support each other. And like uh, they would uh, help if someone wants to start a business and it's a Jew, they, they would help and they've maintained that culture when Toward each other, uh, and uh, they buy from each other, and they they uh, help uh, even with um, uh, capital, and uh, yeah, may, many people even study the Jews when they want to know how to be successful in uh, in business. Why is it difficult for us? Why we are even many? Uh, those are not Jews, but we struggle to uh, to create successful businesses. This managed in uncertain times. Uh, but with us, whether it's certain or uncertain, uh, when we 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 are not as successful as the Jews. Uh, I hope I'm making I'm making sense. In you make. You're making a lot of sense, Tafazo. Um, but before I, I I get to your question, let me just tell you about a book that I have been reading. I haven't finished the book, um, um, you know, at, at the moment. The book is titled Anti Fragile. It's written by a guy called, you know, Nassim Nicholas Taleb. Um, you know, Anti Fragile. Things that gain from 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 disorder. Um, probably, I can say quite a lot about that book um, once I've um, I've I've, I've gone uh, through it. Um, the reason why I was drawn to that book, Tafazo, is you know I've actually been studying the whole concept of anti fragility. 
there is something that they call, there is a concept called anti-fragility, which Ino Talib talks about. And anti-fragility is the opposite, obviously, of being fragile. It describes, you know, systems or things that gain from chaos, you know, but may need to survive and, and flourish. Um, so, so that concept has been developed by, you know, Nicholas Taleb, who has written many, many, many books and is exploring that concept. The reason why I'm bringing up this concept is that, number one, we need to be resilient. And generally, people that develop resilience tend to thrive even when they, you know, even when conditions are not very, very certain. And I think, you know, to answer your question, I think one property of Jews is that, you know, they have been resilient over the years. And as part of, you know, being resilient, they have, um, they have you know, understood why it is, you know, to, 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 to exist in community and to develop excellence. Right, we will not go into the history. You know, the history is well documented, but sometimes when you go through a history where you know everyone is against you, you develop resili you know, resilience. And you know, the concept of resilience is something that people are talking about, you know, in business right now. And in fact, as part of my work, Tafads were in business you would know that we assist companies to put in place resilient systems. And these resilient systems are able to um, withstand stress, withstand volatility, withstand mistakes, withstand attacks, withstand you know, failures. And so what is one of the things that we need to do? We need to embed resilience in what we need to do. And that resilience could be, you know, from a psychological point of view. Uh, we need to develop resilience. Why is it difficult um, for us to uh, follow the example of the Jews? Um, for starters, I think it's possible. It's very, very, you know, possible. Um, we would need, number one, to understand that we need to develop systems uh, because you, know, you can never fight alone. Um, we need to develop systems and those systems um, could be in communities. And that's a very, very you know, important you know, thing. But we also need people that can lead us in the development of, of those systems. So if I look ahead to Fadzo, I think it's possible for people like you and me to even excel probably much more than the Jews have done, which is the example that we have given. You know, once we understand these concepts of anti-fragility and this concept of resilience, Tafadzi. Thank you, Tafadzi. Uh, thank you. Is it is possible to create wealth in uncertain times? Can you? Very, very <laughs> possible. As uh, create wealth in a certain time. So it's very possible to create wealth in uncertain times. Um, very, very much possible. Um, let's just be clear. Wealth creation is all about accumulating assets, assets that gain in value, assets that generate income, even when you are not working. Um, so it, it's very possible. And um, and and history is full of examples. You've also asked me Tafadza, to talk about tips of how to create wealth in uncertain times. Let me just quickly go over seven tips of how to create wealth in uncertain times. Tip number one, be calm, right? It's got to do with your state of mind. Remember what we've always said in the past, um, as you grow uh, emotionally, and as you grow in knowledge, you must also grow to the extent of being able to manage certain emotions, particularly the emotion of fear. There is nobody who has created wealth in uncertain times 
if they are fearful of the future, fearful of what might happen in the future, um, because then you're going to make fear-based decisions. Um, and I hope um, as I speak to people about the political happenings in South Africa and the political happenings globally, you will hear about this country is about to fight that country. You will hear about news of, you know, changing, um, um, you know, political systems. Um, the response of an investor is be calm. Right. Don't make fear-based decisions. Um, make sure that you are, you know, you 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 are very very, um, you know, calm. So that's tip number one. Don't panic. Right. Don't panic. Even as we are entering an uncertain period in South Africa of coalitions, don't panic. Um, these dislocations. Um, will actually yield positive results for you and for the country, you know, at large. That's tip number one. And this tip also applies in any situation where you are handling uncertainty. Um, that uncertainty may stem from uh, economic events, from political events, or it could be uncertainty that may stem from, you know, personal circumstances. Um, um, the thing is, be calm. Don't panic, right? Second tip is be well informed about events. Um, Tafazo, I think that gone are the days when you would just invest and then leave your, you know, your investment to just grow over time. I think those days are, are gone. My view about creating wealth in uncertain times is that you need to be an active investor. An active investor is one who is informed, you know, at all times about events and about what is happening and what may likely happen in the future, which may impact on their investment philosophy. Um, that's why I always encourage people um, to monitor the news, particularly key global events, to monitor trends, um, very, very important. One of the wealth creation ideas that I can give is that be somebody who monitors trend. It's very difficult to swim against the trend. Sometimes trends emerge and you cannot create wealth by swimming against the trend. Um, the trend is to be in your favor. Whether that trend is about demo demographics, whether that trend is about technology, um, just make sure that the trend is in your favor. It's very difficult to create wealth when you are swimming against the tide. And in previous presentations, we've highlighted some of the trends that are happening at the moment. For example, the green revolution. The world is, you know, going green. So cooperate with that trend. We've also spoken about artificial intelligence and some of the technological developments that are happening. Um, cooperate with that trend. Don't go against the trend. There are certain trends that are um, that are emerging. If I look at the political situation in South Africa and also based on the results that have come out. I think there is a trend that is developing around economic transformation um, and frustration at the slow pace at which things have been happening. If you reflect on that trend where people are saying, look, um, um, given the years that we've traveled since democracy, uh, things have not been happening as we have expected. Therefore, probably it's time for us to implement radical policies. That's a trend that is happening. Um, I don't think anybody should swim against that trend. It's a trend that could be in our favor. Um, and so be well informed about events and craft your investment strategy around some of these trends 
which are you know very very you know important. Tip number three, Tafatwa, is that don't lose money in uncertain times, which is rule number one of creating wealth. Rule number one of creating wealth is don't lose the money that you already have. Um, so during uncertain times, um, you shouldn't lose money, right? It doesn't matter how much money you have, um, you must never lose money. That's a rule number one of wealth creation. It's also rule number one of investing. Um, there is a concept in um, investment that we refer to as risk-based decision-making. It's when you invest based on the risks that you are facing and your decisions are informed by the risks that can, you know, that can happen. What am I saying? I'm basically saying that at the end of the day, Tafazo, you cannot divorce investing from risk management. And so one of the things that we need to do during uncertain times is to manage our risks very, very well. And some of the points that I will speak to you about creating wealth in uncertain times revolve around, um, around uh, managing your risks. If I was building assets, in uncertain times, you know, let's talk about somebody who is trading stocks or is, you know, executing any trade. I would put stop losses, right? Stop losses is a trading strategy that protects um, the gains that you have made and enables that you do not lose your capital, right? So, so don't lose money. Um, and there are many ways of protecting yourselves, you know, so that you do not lose money. Um, money can be lost even through inflation. We've already explained that, that inflation is the greatest enemy for any investor. So one of the number one rules, cardinal rules of investing in uncertain times is that protect yourself against inflation. Point number two that we highlighted, keep yourself informed about events. Um, so some of the events that you must pay particular attention to is what are the economists saying about inflation? But much more than your interest in what is happening in social circles and what is happening to this celebrity, um, you should be interested in events around where inflation is going and protecting yourself against inflation, you know, which is very important. In previous shows, we've spoken about protecting yourself against inflation. Um, it could be on the interest rate that you are gaining, that you are getting on your, on your investments. So just make sure that you do not lose money. Um, um, it could be whenever you are investing, the way you are contracting, when you are making that investment decision. The question to ask is, am I protected against inflation? What are the safeguards that I have um, concerning losing money? Um, this is not the time to get involved in get, get rich quick schemes. It's not the time to speculate on certain investments and to part with your hard end cash um, and invest in something that is shrouded in secrecy. Something that, you know, somebody is just pro promising you returns, but they're not telling you how those returns are going to be, um, to be achieved. Look, beloveds, um, central bank authorities are saying that inflation is going to be under control. I believe them, but I just sense that we are going to have significant tectonic shifts in the future. It might not happen in this year, next year, but an astute investor is always prepared for these tectonic shifts. And because they are prepared for these tectonic shifts, um, they implement certain things. So I've said be calm. I've said be informed about events. I've also said that don't lose money. Make sure that you do not lose money. When I talk about don't lose money, I'm also saying that um, 
uh, take calculated risks. That's all. That also, you know, what I'm saying. If you are making an investment, be clear about what can go wrong, right? What is it that can go wrong? Uh, what is the upside that I can get out of, you know, this particular investment? Asking those questions will enable you to calculate the odds, you know, very, very well. When I talk about don't lose money, don't go into an investment where you cannot calculate the odds, all right? Um, you know, don't, right? Don't go into investments that, you know, uh, you cannot calculate, you know, the odds. Uh, this is the time to make investments where the returns could be, you know, asymmetric. I think we've explained that term before. In other words, the odds of you gaining are much, much better than the odds of you losing. And the possibility of you losing, you know, is, is much, much smaller than the possibility of you gaining. And when you gain, you are likely to gain, you know, in a big way. Um, tip number four, diversify. Diversify your income stream. Um, um, that's how we invest in uncertain times. Um, diversification is one of the uh, cardinal ways of investing. Don't put all your eggs in one basket because it's possible to do an investment in oil stocks and then you will wake up one day one country is fighting another country and the price of oil has actually gone down and that impacts on your on your portfolio um so just be diversified be diversified in your income stream um i'm talking about diversification but i'm also alive to the fact that some of the people that are listening to me are employees and therefore the you know major stream of income that you have is a salary and you're asking me how do i diversify right three ideas that i would want to give you idea number one when you have got time start a side hustle so that you can generate some form of income that's a good thing to do, particularly in, in, in these uncertain times. In uncertain times, we always aim to, um, to, to, to create alternative sources of income. Idea number two, partner with like-minded people and you know, invest in significant projects and assets. Um, your own capital on your own may not take you far, but instead of having a group of friends where you spend time just talking about what is happening in the communities and gossiping, um, start an investment club, pull resources together. I think Tafazo, you spoke about what the Jew, Jewish community does, um, where they would want the money to circulate in their own community. Um, that's what we would want to do. Um, in uncertain times, we would need to huddle together. We would need to partner. Partnership with like-minded people is a very good strategy, survival strategy, particularly in uncertain time, times. You will have to recognize that there are things that you cannot do on your own, um, but it will you know, require you to partner with certain people. I'm not only talking about partnership, which involves people that have got money. I'm also talking about partnerships, which involve you know, people with different resources. So for example, you may have the knowledge, you may have the idea, but you may want to partner with somebody who's got money, but they don't have the ideas. We call those strategic partnerships. Um, strategic partnerships is when you partner with, uh, with somebody who's got a resource that you do not have. But when you come together in your partnership, you are much better than you know, one person operating on their own. 
So that's the second idea that I would want to give you about creating wealth in, in uncertain times. It's all about strategic partnerships. It's about building networks of, of, uh, of, of people. Uh, partner with people that have got wisdom. You know, you might not be like Isaac who gets wisdom um, directly from God, but sometimes you may need to partner with wise people. <laughs> Uh, probably that's a very good investment um, um, survival uh, strategy in uncertain times. Um, I can tell you now, the world is not, um, the world is full of wise people. There is always wisdom. And the more access you can have to wisdom in uncertain times, the more you are likely to go ahead in what you're going to do. That's how you create wealth in uncertain times. You've got to have access to wisdom that people do not have. And sometimes having access to that wisdom, let's let's not let's not spiritualize this concept because sometimes people tend to spiritualize some of this concept. In my mind, one way of you accessing wisdom that people do not have it's by socializing and being part of networks where people have got inside knowledge about what is actually happening. Remember what I said, we categorize people into three categories, the retail space, the wholesale space, and creators of markets. And what I have observed through wisdom over time is that People in each of those three categories tend to move in certain social circles. And in those social circles, um, um, if you look at people in the retail space, they spend most of their time discussing use, you know, useless things that have nothing to do with advancing them and taking them to the next level. The people that are in the wholesale space you know, I'm talking about people that are creating a niche. They also move in their social circles. And so one of the ways in which you can access the wisdom that is moving in some of these spaces is by networking with people in those um, sectors. So how do you, um, how do you, for example, um, survive and create wealth in uncertain times? Just upgrade yourself, upgrade your networks. Um, network with people that are creating a niche. If you don't do that <laughs> and you network with people that are in the retail space, who form 93% of 95% of the population, you're not going to go anywhere. Idea number three is that be consistent in your investment. Um, there are two assets that have been proven to create wealth even in uncertain times. And those assets are stocks. Those assets are properties. And we've also been talking about alternative investments. Um, I don't think you can go wrong in investing in any of those asset classes, particularly in uncertain times, um, you know, there. So we've spoken about diversification. Um, then... Number five, don't forget the conventional wisdom of creating emergency funds and uh, the conventional wisdom of taking out insurance. Uh, though that conventional wisdom is, is very, very, you know, important. So in uncertain times, they can be wealth destruction as well, destruction of wealth. Um, and people that operate with emergency, you know, emergency reserves tend to be resilient. We've been talking about resilient. Um, and, you know, I started by talking about mental resilience, staying calm. But also there is financial resilience. And part of building financial resilience is operating with emergency funds, operating with buffers um, that will take you through um, the toughest of, of, of times. Very, very important. Um, idea number six, de-risk your balance sheet. 
um, pay off debt, right? Pay off debt. Normally what happens in uncertain times and that may happen as well, although people are expecting for interest rates to come, you know, to, to, to come down. As an investor, I know that anything can happen, but you need to be well positioned. So stay out of debt, stay out of debt. If you decide to have debt, you know, borrow to do projects, start a company. When that company fails, the debt is ring fenced in a company. Then you can move on. Um, I gave you ideas the last time about protecting your wealth. Those ideas also apply in uncertain um, times. Idea number seven, um, um, be well positioned for the future. Uh, people that create wealth uh, tend to be well positioned for the future. One of the reasons why we are building capital buffers is so that we may pounce on opportunities that you know happen during times of great dislocation, during times of tectonic shifts. The people that are well positioned that have got money can easily grab those opportunities. So the fact that you've got an idea um, does not mean necessarily mean you'll be able to execute on that idea. You need to be well positioned. Um, to take advantage of, of, of the opportunity, you know, Tafazo. Let me stop there. I think I've given quite a number of ideas um, to create wealth in uncertain times. The long and short of it is that we are living in very uncertain times and we need strategies of how to operate during those uncertain times. And thank you much uh, for those insights. You spoke about um, fear, uh, that you can get to out with the fear, uh, making decisions based on fear. Uh, today in the morning, I attended an event where the CEO of uh, Kumba Iron Ore, or mine, uh, was uh, sharing her story. And uh, she was saying she grew up in a small town in uh, KZN, and um, when she was doing a matric, uh, some guys came uh, for career guidance, and then they shared that uh, uh, chemical engineering was very tough. It was one of the toughest uh, courses, I think, from what they presented. And she said that's what motivated her to pursue uh, chemical engineering, the fact that it was hard. Uh, she won in her mind. She told herself it's possible to to excel in this despite that they have predicted a very a very difficult um, uh, course. So yeah, uh, I just thought as we we're talking about the mind and uncertainty. Uh, those who have made it have been presented with uh, difficult challenges, but they've seen possibilities in those um, uh, difficulties and uh, found ways um, to work around it. Now she's a CEO, but uh, well, what motivated her was how she was going to excel in a course which she had no idea about, but because she just wanted that challenge, say this is hard, but uh, others made it. So if others have made it during difficult times, it means, you know, uh, someone once said, um, every door can be opened. We just need to have the right key. So I believe with what Temba has been sharing, those were the keys. You may be on the right door, but if you don't have the key or the right key, you will not get in. I was talking to someone yesterday uh, from Zimbabwe, and I was just discussing that there was an era in Zimbabwe where People just wake up and they're rich. They have Lamborghinis, they have uh, all the sports cars uh, and all the big, nice houses. So we're discussing that, ah, these days it's not like it's very popular, but then he quoted uh, one or two who are still quite popular uh, in that regard. And um, you spoke to him about uh, get rich quick. Normally in at certain times, sometimes there's that temptation, fall back on... Uh, 
days where we, we wake up rich. We don't have to go through the hard, we don't have to, to work hard or to go through the systems or the... When I started speaking, I spoke about um, Isaac, who became rich and became prosperous because the Lord was with him. So I was just being reminded of uh, Isaiah 48, 17, uh, which says, uh, that says the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I'm the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way uh, you should you should go. And also uh, Deuteronomy 28, uh, if you are going to prosper following God's ways, there's a lot of promise in the word of God, where God promises to prosper despite the uncertainty, despite the, the environment. Because uh, as I mentioned earlier, when uncertainty, there's that pressure, there's that temptation to want to, to wake up rich, to do it the easier way. Uh, suffering is not easy. Uh, but um, uh, before I give it to Tim, uh, I just wanted to quote uh, uh, Deuteronomy 28 uh, from vain. Uh, to 12, he says, the Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he has promised you on earth. If you keep his call of the Lord, your God, and walk in his ways, then all people on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity, fruit of your womb, the young one of your stock, and the crops of your ground. In the land is what your forefathers. The Lord will open heavens the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations to borrow from land. So if um, we're going to trust God to help us uh, create wealth in uncertain times, um, he's able to do that and uh, it's possible. Timba, um, what are your remarks and how can people get hold of you? So my closing remarks is going back to what we said. Um, we are living in very uncertain times. Secondly, um, one of the secrets of creating wealth in uncertain times is to do the opposite of what everyone else you know, is doing. It's very important that we develop resilience in whatever we do. But ultimately, we need to upgrade ourselves from the retail space to the wholesale space and to be creators of market. Great businesses sometimes are created during uncertain times. Uh, we cannot wish some of the uncertainty that we are experiencing away. Um, it's just become the new normal, you know, what they call the new normal. And so we need to be used to that new normal, that uncertainty which we have defined as the inability to focus future events. Um, in the past, things were quite certain it was possible to focus future events. If you want to get hold of me, um, Google my name on LinkedIn, Temba Duplex Mazibuko, drop me a message, and I will respond to any comment or any request that you might have. Uh, thank you very much, Timba, for your time and uh, for the insights. Uh, I learned a lot uh, from you and I believe our audience also learned a lot and uh, that we'll be able to implement and uh, we'll be able to prosper despite uh, uncertain times. You can, if you want to get hold of us, you can write us an email at tafazwa at tafazwamazbukospeaks.co.za. You can also visit our website www.tafazamazbikospeaks.co.za and you can also like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Dream That Is Worth Fighting For. Uh, Temba also has a YouTube channel, Manage Your Finances Like a Black Belt. Uh, thank you very much for joining us and uh, we appreciate your support. Uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Let's grow together. Your dream is worth fighting for. Cheers.